Hello, it's Claire Havana on Sega Vix, and we have two very special guests right here. Uh, what is your name? I'm Tracy Yardley. And I'm Jennifer Hernandez. Alright, great. Uh, what role do you play in the Sonic Archie comics? Well, I've been a, a principal for the Archie comics for about 11 years now. I worked primarily on the Sonic Universe book. I did uh, about 40 issues of Sonic, and I moved over and did about 80 issues of Sonic Universe. And now I'm actually just going back to the regular Sonic book with issue 289. Okay. Hey, Jennifer? Um, I'm also a penciler uh, for the Sonic book. I made. I mostly do the regular Sonic book. I don't really do the universe much. I don't remember how many issues I've done or anything like that. But I've done uh, quite a few covers too. All right. So, all right. So a few, a few questions here. All right. You, how did, how did your job working on the Son Sonic Archie comics happen? Oh, like how did it start? Yes. Um, it was actually at this convention a few years ago, I think it was 2011. Um, I wanted to show Spaz, because he was going to be here. I wanted to show him my Sonic art, so I did. And uh, he told me to show it to the editor. Uh, at the time it was Paul Kaminsky. <laughs> and then going back and forth with him is how I got on board. Uh, speaking of Spaz, what is he doing lately? Do you know? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. No. All right. And you? I, I have no idea. I've never met Spaz. I've spoken to him in a couple of emails, but I think he must be kind of a recluse, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, to get into the book, uh, it was about 2005. I was at uh, MegaCon in Orlando. I was doing some Sonic sketches in a, in a sketch book of mine. This guy that I was acquainted with from Savannah College of Art and Design, who went there at the same time I did, he saw what I was doing, and he, he said that he knew the editor of Sonic. At that time, it was Mike Valerito, who's now the president of the company. And uh, he gave me his phone number, so I sent him some samples and he liked what I was doing. So then he let me do some uh, some backup stories, which were actually he and Flynn's first, um, like it was kind of his interview stuff, too. So then he liked that, so then I got to do uh, issues 160 and 161, and it just went on from there. <laughs> Yeah. All right, it's thank kind of, you so much. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty deep. All right, All right uh, next question. How does it feel working for a popular franchise like Sonic? It's, it's cool, it's great, because you get to come to these shows and you get to have your banner up and people know what it is. And like, hey, Sonic, even if they don't know who I am, they know what Sonic is. So it's a it's a pretty nice, uh, it's a nice way to make some money for uh, using a property that people uh, know and love. And it's fun, it's, it's fun to have that sort of uh, shared notoriety with Sonic, I know. Like I said, people don't usually know who I am. Some people do sometimes now after I've been doing it for so long. Everybody knows who he is, so, so oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Just, a, just remember, you're important in the grand scheme of things anyway, <laughs> all right? <laughs> that's good to know. And you? I'm sorry. <laughs> What's it like right. to work on Sonic? Oh, um, it can be nerve-wracking sometimes. Like, it is exciting, like Tracy said. But um, sometimes people have, like, their own expectation of Sonic and what he should look like and stuff like that, and it's a little... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit notorious, yeah. but, you know, you saw, you saw fun in the end, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, definitely. All right, next question. How do you feel about the Sonic Archie comics being the longest-running comics based on a video game? It's awesome. I love it. I love it. And I love being a little part of it, you know? I've been reading this book since I was like 13, back in 1996. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's cool. Like, it's like Jennifer. I, I read them when I was a kid, and I'm working on them now. It's pretty neat. <laughs> but dream come true. It's like the very thing you're a fan of, and now you're suddenly working on it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, next question. Has the UK-based Sonic the Comic series influenced the story in any way? The comics in any way? I, I don't think so, because I don't really write the stories. I, I, don't I know. mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, do the, like the Sonic the comic from the UK affect the Sonic Archie series in any sort of way? I don't think so. No. I don't, I don't yeah, think no. that it really does, no. So, it'd, be, it'd be cool to do something with it someday, but that's, yeah. that would be a whole can of worms that we wouldn't deal with. So. Right. So basically, they're all, their own separate things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. This question? Have any other franchises from, say, movies, comics, cartoons, anime, etc., influenced the Sonic comics in any way? 
That is a good question. I know from reading the old books that there was a whole lot of pop culture references in the older books before Ian and I ever started work on. So yeah, I'd say back then definitely. Uh, not, not probably not so much. Ian drops Ian drops a, a good few little little like an gags occasional and, reference. Yeah, but nothing, and stuff yeah, like nothing, nothing major. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree with what you said. <laughs> Alright, next question. Do the artists double as writers? As in, do the, do, the, do the artists have any influence on the writing itself? I haven't, but I know Tracy, I mean, not Tracy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Evan Stanley, because she wrote a story. That I don't think she's penciled, I think you penciled that one. The Silver Art. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I did I did pencil it, uh, the Silver Art in Sonic Universe. But yeah, I did actually get to write some. I, I wrote two Sonic Universe arts also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Both of those, just kind of, they both kind of fit in where Ian had a break and whatever else he was doing. So I was happy to get that chance because it's a lot of fun. Well, now I want to. Yeah, hey, yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> so you can do it. And now here's the opposite. Do the writers influence the artists in any way? Um, Besides writing the story. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, what he scripts, he puts, like, he's very descriptive about what kind of faces he wants, what kind of, you know, what the scenes what look kind of like. Pose, what kind of scenery, what kind of face, etc. Yeah, but we, you know, we put our own little twist on it. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's usually pretty detailed with his script, you know. Sometimes they'll indicate specific camera angles or, you know, motions that they're doing with their hands or facial expressions or whatever's in the background. Sometimes he does it. And even when he does, he's a great guy. He understands that he has a way to do as much or a little of that as things we want or need to. So, uh, he's, he's great to work with. All right. Next question. What is the process they go through to create a new character? Who conceives them? Who designs them? And is it Ian's idea or is it more like a group effort? From what I understand, it's been like a group effort. I know what the reboot or the reboot. <laughs> the quote unquote reboot. Um, yeah, I think Ben Bates and Ryan Jambo like did that together with Ian and Aaliyah Baker. Like it was a whole group effort to get those the redesigns. But I think for each individual story too, I think it depends on the writer, like what they have in mind. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, usually whenever the a new character is introduced, like um, What's her name? Yeah. Treasure Hunter. All those dumb stories. I can't remember her name. Oh, God, I think we're going to... It's like a one million of comments on that. Yeah, the, the Pika. Relic. Relic the Pika, yeah. Anyway, whatever, whatever she was into. Like, Kalia did an initial design for her. And then I did my, my you know, rip on that. And then we got together and decided what the best little pieces were. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, like the stories that I wrote, I, I, I introduced some character designs to so myself, of course, because I uh, threw them too. <laughs> that was convenient. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's usually a group effort, in short. Okay. <laughs> Alright, next question. Uh, what? Uh, any comments on the upcoming arc, the one that's based on the classic Sonic Genesis games? Megadrive? Yeah, Mega Drive, the one that's based on the classic Sonic games, you know, one through three mm -hmm. CD, etc. I love the first one. I think Tyson did a really good job on it, and I love the artwork and the story is great, lighthearted, you know, classic Sonic stuff, and it's funny. I like it. It's good. Yeah, I think you might also be referring to his issues two ninety two, three, four, five. Uh, the story arc is called Genesis of the Hero. So yeah, it's just, and then each issue is just kind of a one-shot, fun uh, fallback to the old games. And once we get done with those four issues, there'll be there's a brand new story arc after the Shattered World Saga. Uh, but it, it is fun to draw. It's, I, it's like the first time I've really gotten extensively to draw the classic versions of the characters and all that stuff. And we, over the years, they've done several times they've had callbacks to the old games, <laughs> Sonic X, and then did the Genesis thing too. So I've drawn those those uh, backgrounds and the game stuff a lot. This is the first time I've really gotten to draw Sonic in his uh, classic thing design. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's fun. Right. Great. Um, next question. Uh, do you have any opinions of the spin-off series Sonic Boom as a whole? Are you disappointed that the writer slash artist had to close down the story prematurely? I 
I mean, yeah, it's sad that that book had to end. But it was fun while the lived. I hope maybe they'll pick it up again or do some other boom stories and maybe when the series picks up again, I hope. I can't say anything, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll bring it back sometime, I don't know. But uh, I only did, got to do a few covers, but it was, uh, it was fun. It was, it was a cool book. Nice to have comedic feel on it. Uh, next question. Uh, here's a here's a bit of a controversial one. Do you find psychic restrictions on what the writers slash artists can do a hindrance or a personal challenge? And if the restrictions weren't there, would you change anything? No. <laughs> no? I like keeping it to what Sega likes and what Sega wants because yeah. I mean they're Sonic's parents, I guess you could Quote say. Unquote. Yeah, I like I like. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. It's their, it's their property. I'm willing to do whatever they want to do. And I don't even think, I don't think there's too much that's all that restrictive anyway. It's, it's not a problem. Okay. Alright, next question. Do you have a personal history with Sega? Like with its various IPs or consoles or anything like that? I had a Sega Genesis when I was younger, but I don't know. I don't really have like a history. With it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like you're familiar with Sega and like their yeah, consoles like and their, uh, franchises. Their consoles. And... Yeah, but, like I grew up with that stuff. Sure, yeah. yeah. My, it was actually my brother got the Genesis, but I played it a lot more than he did. I, and it came with Sonic One, and then I got Sonic Two, and yeah. on from there. I, I think the last game that I really had time to actually sit through and beat the whole game was Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. <laughs> Since then, I, I just haven't had the time to play them like I'd like to. So you kind of have like on and off days in a sense, or you, you just go years, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, like yeah, yeah. I used to love to play the games. I just don't have the time for it. Uh, I still think they're cool. I like Sonic Colors. Uh, that was I played a lot of that. My kids had that. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I'd love to play Sonic Lost World. I think it looks. I think it looks like a great game. I've, I haven't played it though. So. It's maybe, definitely maybe something. That's for sure. <laughs> I only played it demo. Maybe someday. <laughs> All right. All right, next question. If you were given the opportunity, would you adapt another Sega IP into a comic series? Like, for example, Streets of Rage, Shinobi, Quiglio, Virtual Fighter, Skies of Arcadia, Jet Set Radio, etc. Uh, would you do it, and which one and why? I would really love it if they would pick up Knights again, or like try that over. <laughs> I'd yeah, like Knights. Yeah, the original adaptation was something. Let's just go with that. Yeah, and really short. <laughs> oh, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it before. The Skies of Arcadia would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I really like nautical things, you know, like pirate ships and stuff, and all that stuff. And I like sci-fi and fantasy, so it's a perfect combination. I'd love to do that someday. If they ever would. All right. Who knows? <laughs> all right, before we finish off, uh, do you have any final comments? Uh, no, I mean, just that uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, taking the time to interview us. And, uh, I really appreciate all the fans who have supported the Sonic book over the years and keep me in business. And, uh, mm -hmm. I hope that everybody will continue to do so. And, uh, thanks for the support. And thanks to all the fans. Uh, I can't say it better than that. Yeah. Good job, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you. This has been Blair Habanero from Sega Bits. Going out. <laughs>